or you still you you still drive for Trans Am or or I just recently um quit within like oh, two weeks ago. Right. I did a full year out there and then um I just left over there. Let's get this party started. That's tomorrow, mm-hmm. and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a. I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. Thank you, Bill O'Reilly. I appreciate that. That's uh, that's right. We're doing it live. Doing it once again on the Lockout Men podcast show. Back again with another podcast interview for you guys. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys joining me. That's what's up. Well, today, of all days, it's a beautiful day. I got the backdrop going. You know what I'm saying? Got all types of lighting going on in here. I want to welcome everybody in the LOM community uh, joining me live right now. Uh, we got a young man from uh, YouTube. YouTube. Uh, been, uh, been been in these streets, and I reached out to him. I want to chop it up with him about uh, about his life in, uh, in the trucking field. That's what I do. That's what I do. If you guys like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like that and like this. Also, while you're at it, you can hit that all button so that you can get this content whenever I drop videos. That's what it's all about, you know what I'm saying? Show YouTube that you messing with your boy. Also, if you want to show some support, I do appreciate it. Support the channel, support me, hook a brother up with some coffee, cash app, lock out men, the dollar sign, you know what I'm saying? Well, right now we about to uh we, we about to bring to the show my man Javon. Welcome, bro. What's up, welcome, what's welcome. Up, what's up with Thanks it, man? Thanks for having me. Oh, no doubt, no doubt, man. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate you, bro. I got you. All right, all right. Okay. So, man, where where you at right now? Where where you at in the part of the world right now? Right now, I'm in uh, sitting in uh, Ohio. Are you in? Oh, you in my home state, bro? Where about? Where about in Ohio? <laughs> yeah, I just I just seen that. Um, when your uh, number pops up, I seen the uh, what do you call it? Two one six, baby. Stay full up, you know what I mean. That you're in Ohio, also. Let me tell you where exactly. You know. Well, no, I'm me. I'm okay. not in. I'm I'm All coming. Right. I'm coming to Ohio, but I'm I'm not in Ohio. Not oh, not just yet. Oh, I see what. Not you, not not just yet, bro. Called, uh, Archbold. Where where you at? It's called Archbold, Ohio. Arch. Bowl, Ohio. Bowl. Arch Bowl. Uh-huh. God damn it, man. Uh, first before we get into anything, man, I, I meant to ask you while we was in the green room. Are you are you on your headset? Uh are you on your headset? No, nah, right. Or you got me nah, on speaker? Right, no, I'm actually I got to pick it up because I'm parked right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you if you would take me off the of speaker, man, and talk to me directly through the phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you hear me better? Yeah, no? there you go. Much better, much better, bro. Much better. Yep. Uh, so you you hanging out in Ar- Arch Archibald, Ohio? Yep. Man, you know I got a delivery out here. You know <laughs> I got a delivery. It's crazy that that you even say hanging out because I got an OSND right now. So I'm, you know I'm just sitting on here trying to get this resolved. Yeah. You know I got I, I I'm from Ohio. Grew up, born, raised. In Ohio, it was only mm-hmm. it was only that I got into trucking that I have known that it is more obscure places in Ohio, man. Like like White House yeah. Court, Vandalia, Groveport. I'm like, man, what the hell is going <laughs> on? Like, I'm like, I only know like the the major cities, like. uh Columbus, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Toledo, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio. 
And I got all these, yeah, I, I, I got all these other places, man, that, that I ain't even heard of, man. I ain't even heard of. Well, we're doing it uh, simulcast. We're doing it live right now. Uh, welcome to the show, Jiggly Trucker. Uh, dreaming big. Good day and big wave. What's going on, guys? I appreciate you guys being here. Um, uh, so right now we're talking to uh, Javon right now. Right now he's up in Ohio. So, bro, man, uh, tell, the, tell the community and the viewers and the listeners uh, – a little bit about yourself, man. Where where are you from? Originally, I'm from. I was born in Jamaica, but I live in the state of Florida. You know what I mean? Jamaica, um, man. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I've been in the trucking game for a full year now, so I'm still what you call a rookie. You know what I mean? Um, it's still a growing experience for me, and uh, you know, it's a good opportunity for you for you to even have me on a show to share my experience. Okay. So far, what it's like for you guys coming into the game and for experience, guys, you know, anybody have any advice or, you know, could give me some advice as because I'm an open person. I like to learn also, you know what I mean? That's, so, that's what's yeah, up. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Uh, yo, Jiggly Trucker said that accent is rocking, bro. <laughs> <laughs> she said that accent, she said that accent is rocking. <laughs> All right, man. So, so you um so you so you was born in well, you was born and raised in Jamaica. What was life like uh in Jamaica and what was it that brought you over to the states? Well, naturally I came here through my uh to my grandma you know what I mean? As a matter of fact, God rest her soul. She just passed away two days ago. You know what I mean? She no did doubt. this. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So she had did some paperwork back when um, I was younger, a few years ago, and it basically came true as an adult. So I migrated to the States um, five years ago, basically. And um, I've been a chef pretty much like all my life since ever since like I left high school. I did maybe like a year in community college and then been in the kitchen. I've always had a thing for trucks because uh, my um, uncle, you know, he wanted to get in trucks so always around cars and trucks. Mm -hmm. Then when I came to the States, I've been cooking for like four years, just the same. And I decided, you know what, I'm just going to give the trucking thing, uh, give it a shot and see what it's like, you know what I mean? But life in Jamaica, life in Jamaica was, um, I'd say it was good looking back, you know what I mean? With the whole experience, it just seems like it was just yesterday, you know what I mean? It's a lot of different experiences. Um, and I'm and I live in Florida now, pretty like West Palm in Florida mm -hmm. is almost the same like Jamaica. Like you get all the food, you see a lot of Jamaicans still. There's a lot of Caribbean vibes, so it's almost the same like you know as living here. It's just it's a third world country, and America is a first world country. So there's slightly a little bit more difference, you know what I mean? But other than that, it's man. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, bro. That's what's up, man. Uh, so is it true? Is it is it true what they say uh, about Jamaican living in Jamaican? People are are a little bit more freer. They're they're a little bit more uh, uh, a little bit more open than they is over here in the states. Like, is it true what Eddie Murphy said? You know, Jamaican brothers walking around looking all buff and females looking all looking all out there and all like that. Is it <laughs> is it true about that, man? Help, help, I mean, help it's, a brother it's out. Much, so it, 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 it's some to, to an extent, yeah, it's true. But I mean, it's just like anywhere else. You don't feel at home when, you know, when you're accustomed to a place, you know what I mean? So it's much different for like if uh, if somebody that's not from there to go there, then you're going to feel like a little bit, you know, iffy about certain things or you're going to see certain things that you're not really used to. But if you're from there, you know what I mean? You will see certain things. It's, it's like it's a norm because, you know, that's what, that's just what it is. But, you know, Jamaica is a cool place. Whenever I talk to people about Jamaica that, that has never been there, or I've always wanted to go there. Um, they always say, man, you're like an ambassador for Jamaica. It's, I'm not making seem more than what it is. It's just, you know, it's just my experience. And it, it is it's exactly like uh, what I grew up and just like I grew up, just like I tell it. You know, so it's it's a good vibe. You know. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Uh, the the music though, the music from Jamaica 
is 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 big over here in the states, man. It's real big over here in the states, and probably a little bit of the culture too. And since you said you jumped into uh, jumped in jumped in the kitchen, man, what what kind of what 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 we cooking? What 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 we got? What we got good in the kitchen, bro? Oh, what shit. we got good in the kitchen, man? Well, for me, I mean personally, I did uh, nine and a half years in the game of kitchen side of it, you know what I mean? Um, I worked every station in the kitchen, you can think of one of the the grill, so, you know what I mean? And I worked in different environments as being a grill cook or, or you know, a lead line cook, you name it. So, at the last, my favorite of all the experience I've had in the kitchen, basically, um, I started in Jamaica as a bachi chef. You know them Japanese guys mm-hmm. that do them fire tricks and yeah, uh, box, yeah, you know? yeah. I pretty much learned, uh, yeah, I learned how to do it when I was in the hotel back in Jamaica, and I, <laughs> I did, believe it or not, I did it in the states um, for about two years since I've been here, and man, it's been a great experience. I can't even lie. Um, I really miss that part of um, the kitchen, you know what I mean? So I know a lot of different cuisines. I know Italian cuisines. So what? So what? Steaks. So what we? So, so what we eating, man? What what we eating? I mean, what you? What what's some of the <laughs> what's some of the dishes that that what's some of the good dishes that you could prepare, man? Like 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 I'm I'm, I'm a hungry brother, man. What what you got? What you got good? What's what's on today's menu, man? What's on today's menu? I mean, it, it, well, if 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 I was at the crib and I was gonna make some stuff, I'd probably make some seafood paella. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's basically um, yellow rice with some vegetables inside and uh, okay. and all the seafood, some lobster, clams, yeah. and mussels. Yeah, yeah, you know I mean? yeah. I'll put that. We'll put that Jamaican yeah. flair inside yeah. of it. And, you know, mix it up. Oh, yeah. yeah, there we go. I had to get that again, man. <laughs> 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 Hell yeah, man! Hook a brother, up. hook a hungry brother up, man. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so about nine, yeah, about nine or so years in uh in the kitchen. But uh, you said your family, your uncle, uh, he was in he was in the truck. So that's that's where you got your inspiration from. Uh, before uh getting yeah. before getting in the trucks. Yeah, he wanted. Well, he actually, man, tough that you have to say, it, but. You know, he passed, uh, what is it, going on this August, as a matter of fact, is going to make um, three years now since he passed, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm sorry um, and to he hear passed that, back man. in Jamaica. But, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, man, it's crazy. Uh, when he actually got, you know, put his foot into the door of the whole trucking world, like, he got his, the, the up, he upgraded his license. You no, know, like, here we get a CDLA called the upgrade. So he upgraded his license um, back in Jamaica, and then, like, within a week after that, you know what I mean, he passed off. So, you know, I kind of a part of it's kind of like me continue continuing, you know, the dream of what he wanted to do. You know what I mean? And That's he's always up. been a car person and That's a truck up. person, so That's you what's know, up. Jiggly, the love is inside my heart, same man. You know what I mean? Jiggly Jiggly Trucker gave me some uh, emojis over here. She was like, "Yeah, feed her too." <laughs> she said, "Feed." She said, "Feed her too." She's coming to dinner. <laughs> no, nah, Jiggly, oh, he's man. gonna I, he's yo, gonna I, you know he's gonna feed me first. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I, I got this little um this little plug in pot that I I used in the truck from when I was at Trans Am. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, I, you know, it gets costly when you eat out here on the road fast. Right, all the yeah, time. it gets so costly. Yeah, it, it costs sometimes big. Sometimes I buy, like, it costs big. Yeah, sometimes I go by Walmart, I get some, you know, some broccoli, cauliflower, and then just cook some shrimp and broccoli and cauliflower, a little bit of teriyaki and ginger, and just mix it all up. Okay. You know what I mean? Serve for a few days, you know what I mean? Okay, so, that's what's up, yeah. man. That's what's up. Oh, yeah, you we. Man, we we eating we we eating good in the neighborhood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm uh, telling you. <laughs> you uh you you start so uh so you got in the truck and which which route did you take? Did you did you go get your CDLs through a a, through a, a legitimate trucking school or did you go to uh a, a, a trucking company to get your license? Uh, actually, um, I paid out of pocket for my for mine because oh, I live out of oh, Florida, I live oh, in the yeah. West Palm Beach oh, area. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, man, if so, anybody if anybody could pay out of pocket, that would be the best way. Now, now, no, no, best, no yeah, shots. That's, that's what no, I that's what I learned. No, no shots fired. No shots fired. Uh, no shots fired. You know what I'm saying? But if you could pay out of pocket, if you could pay out of pocket, pay out of fucking pocket. You will have no 
qualms to whatever trucking company that you decide to go to. Um, Jiggly Trucker, mm -hmm. she just trying back in. She said, so why not have a buffet at the truck stop? Uh, hey, this COVID, nah. this COVID is going on right now. They ain't even doing shit at the truck stop, let alone a buffet. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Sean, mm -hmm. Shane, Sean Brown, what's up? What's going on, y'all? Um, so, all right. So, so you paid out of pocket. Uh, what, what school you went to? You went to, uh, you went to like a, 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 a regular trucking school or you went to, uh, a, a community college or something like that? Nah, it wasn't, it was just a regular trucking um, school. It's called Metropolitan Trucking Institute and it's a Pike Road and Southern, Southern Boulevard in um, West Palm Beach. I think I paid out of pocket um, all around cost me about three grand and I did about three months for a 120 hour, 120 hour certificate program. And that was for the manual because I got the manual thing on my license. I think it's cheaper if man, you take the automatic or man, something I, like I, that. I'm, I'm sorry to get you. I, I, I just had to give you the buzz. I'm sorry at you, man. I, I paid I paid five thousand five thousand six hundred and twenty four dollars for uh for mine. I started I started in uh let me see. I paid for it in August, started in September, got my license in December because I, I went to I went to night school and of course we couldn't do the full 12 hours uh 12 hours we pretty much have to do like six hours a day six hours a night or something like that you know but i i pulled through though i pulled through mm -hmm. you know but yeah five grand that yeah that that was a hit on the pockets but you know i went on here and used mm -hmm. that use that very last credit card i used that very last credit card and i said i knew that i wasn't going to be able to pay capital one back sorry capital one i'm sorry I, I, you know. But I, I got my license though. Yeah, man. I, I, I was, I was, I was out there. I was out there hustling real hard. Um, when it came to getting that money, that three grand for the um thing, because like I told you, I was doing a budget. Mm -hmm. So I was seeing, you know, I would cook in front of my customers, and I have a great show outside of my, you know, regular thing. And I've, and I've always just been a real individual. So, you know, most times I talk to my customers, I'm like. You know, enjoy me while you can, because after this, I'm getting on. It's like, where you going? I'm going on a truck. And, you know, I, I don't tell them, like, hey, I am, it's going to cost me three grand out of the pocket. But they put on a good show. You leave with some oh, tips. They all give you, the $70 they, oh, they do $1. tip. They, they do tip yeah, you. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what's so, up. You know what I mean? I just basically put the work in and add all that money up. And then eventually I came up. I think I came up with about two grand okay. at one point, And then I just came, just went and paid the two grand. And then I had a balance of like um, a thousand bucks. And then they had, I think I was I was there for like two and a half months or three months. So it gave me the option to pay that the balance there. But before I know it, I knocked it off and I got the license and I was out of there. You know what I mean? Okay. Now being that you now being that you from Florida though, uh, and I and you got your license down in Florida, uh. Some trucking companies don't hire out of Florida, though, and and majority of them have a very very hard time getting a driver that do live in Florida home. Well, no, no, I rephrase that. They they don't have no problem getting you home. They have a problem getting you out of Florida. So usually you had to like like uh -huh. deadhead up to like deadhead up to like the next state over in order to get something has that ever affected yeah. effect, affected you while you was driving with said company all right so this is this is before i even get into that i don't i don't want to and i don't want to go off topic um, either but let me just say this the road i went to get my cds mm -hmm. um looking back i probably or i give somebody the advice of maybe taking a mega carrier and let them give you a CDL because this is a, the struggle that I faced that I didn't know about. I paid out of pocket for my CDL. Right. I got my CDL license and then I started looking for jobs. Right. When I started looking for jobs, I started calling all these companies. I couldn't get a job that would give me a start from Florida because just like you said, they wouldn't have any freight coming out of Florida. Mm -hmm. So then it kind of put me in a spot where I couldn't find a job. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a CDL and you're going out there, you get your permit, I suggest you go, go find a find a company that's going to give you a CDL because then automatically you have a job already lined up. You see what I mean? And then you wouldn't have to go through the whole rigmarole of trying to find a job. Anyway, I came across Transam and they told me that they could hire me and that's basically how I ended up 
Now, Trans Am has, um, they have an account with, uh, what do you call it, uh, Pepsi. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a Pepsi dedicated. No, I wasn't able to get on the Pepsi dedicated right off the bat. Uh, you know, uh, Florida ships are in June. It's what I mean. And uh, Tropicana and Pepsi, basically. So they have freight coming outside of Florida. But when I when I just started, they would have to add me, like, deadhead to, like, all the way up in, like, northern Florida to find me something or something that would, like, go all the way to Georgia or something, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Most likely that was the case. But it never really been an issue for, like, for like them. I guess they would have just taken the hit or whatever they had to do because they hired me and they told me they could get me home and get me back out there, you know? Mm-hmm. All right, so Trans Am is uh, yeah. Trans Am is who you went with. You, that's that's the only company that uh, that was the only company straight out the gate that uh, that 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 you rocked out with. What was your experience? Yeah, straight out the gate. What, what was your experience with uh, Trans Am? Because I hear a whole bunch of horror stories from drivers and from people <laughs> just alike. Uh, what about about Trans Am? Uh, I mean, I'm going to tell you the honest truth, like, I did my research before I went here, you know what I mean? And I read all the reviews, I watched all the YouTube videos, um, I read all the comments, all that stuff, and none of it was good, you know what I mean? None of it. So I knew kind of what I was getting into. I didn't know, like, about the trends per mile or anything like that, um, how the pay was kind of set up. I knew that I wasn't going to make any money because for the most part, everybody tell you within your first year, you're not really going to make Right. some real money or whatever the case is but i kind of knew i had an idea of what it was like going in there so i got into the, the, the got into it and after like a whole year looking back it wasn't all that bad you know what i mean it was survival I, I made one i did it for one full year no for me i did do one full year of general otr okay i did six months of general otr and then when i got up to six months they put me on the dedicated no, the, the the regular OTR pays like thirty one cents a mile. Okay. The dedicated pays up to forty nine cents. Hmm. So that's how I ended up staying here that long. Okay. You see what I mean? Okay. No, the way the dedicated, the way it starts, I think it starts you off at like forty three cents, and then after three months, you go up to forty six cents. Well, up this train is passing, but. Okay. 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 So. But thirty yeah, you, you thirty go, one thirty one cent though that's uh that's that's ugly yeah and, that's, I know, and you man. said that's o, <laughs> and you said that's OTR yeah that's the regular OTR com- um regular OTR account where you run you know the forty eight states um and it's they like I mean there's a lot of ups and downs and I've had you know all these things they and you know every truck driver normally pushes to get like three thousand miles that's like the mark. Where you can see a decent paycheck based on your um, based on your cents per mile that you're getting, you know what I mean? Okay. Usually a transam, from my experience, like I've hit three thousand miles or I've had I've hit like thirty three hundred miles one time. Mm-hmm. But usually when you get to around twenty five hundred miles, they cap you off. And I can give you a perfect example of something like that. One time, one morning I was at I was sitting at uh, what was it? Uh, about 2,800 miles I was sitting on on Thursday because at, at Thursday midnight the paper yard cuts off right Right. so I was sitting on like 2,800 miles in the morning Thursday morning they gave me a fresh load about 1,200 miles right and I had and I had like 11 hours that I could actually run so I was like shit and the load picks up the same day and I'm going so I'm like I'm going to run at least 600 bucks 600 miles because that's going to put me at like 3,300 miles Anyway, I start my day, do my pre-trip, go pick the load up. I drove 100 miles out of it. So that put me at 2,900 miles. I drove 100 miles out of the load. And then they stop me early in the morning and tell me to go to this rest area to go get, to, to do a relay. They say a driver is going to come do the relay. Now I ask them, what time is the relay going to come? They say the relay is going to be there like at 11 o'clock at night. Remember, the midnight, the paper yard cuts off. So I only drove 100 miles out of that load. I want me to sit the entire day to wait for a driver that's going to come at 11 o'clock at night. By the time I get his load, I'm not going to be able to run any miles. So I'm going to cap off at like 2,900 miles. You see what I mean? So I had to like, I stopped and I called my dispatch. 
I called my driver manager at the time and I was like, man, listen, I don't got no problem following the instructions or doing whatever you guys say. And you do a lot of relays when you're on the um the general OTR account. That's just the way it is, you know what I mean? Like, I ain't got no problem doing what you guys say, but come on, man. I'm out here away from my family doing everything, doing all this, sacrificing. Like, the least you guys can do is just let me make these miles. You know what I mean? Don't cap me off. Don't stop me this time. Like, the one time that I'm actually going to go over 3,000 miles, you guys are going to stop me in the middle of the road and tell me to go wait for a relay to come, like, wow. at 12 o'clock at night. That doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? So they, they play games with the miles. You know what I mean? They Once you get to, like, 2,500 miles, they, like, they will slow you down. Yeah. They will deliberately slow you yes. down. They will give you a next load that doesn't pick up until, like, two days later. <laughs> So you can't move. You have you have no you have no choice but to sit and wait for that load to be ready. That's crazy that they do that, man. Uh, they, they and they and they do yeah, that man. and they and they just do that purposely so they won't have to so they don't want so they don't have to pay you no more than what they want to pay you, right? Exactly, exactly. That's what I that's how I interpret. It, you know, what I mean, they, like it caps you off because I mean you're still not making any money, but you're still gonna make more than what you know, the little chum change that you get. You see what I mean? Because obviously you're going to want to make more money. You're going to try to max. You're going to try to run as many miles as you possibly can. You, But they just cap you off. They, once you get close to 3,000 miles, uh, forget it. They, they, you know, they're going to do something to slow you down. You think they... You know, I've seen it many times, You, you think they do that... You, you think they do that because of... Of of they trying to push all their drivers to become lease drivers, you think they do that to their company drivers so that they can so they can give more to their lease drivers? Well, even with the lease, like they tell when I when I started there, they tell you oh, the um in the orientation like we don't force we don't force you to do lease, mm -hmm. we don't force you. We're not going to tell you to go do lease, but when you go there and you hear 31 cents a mile and you hear like a dollar or four or a dollar or three per mile for a lease, then you're going to think in yourself, damn, 31 cents a mile or a dollar or four a mile, which one do I choose? Automatically, you're going to want to, you're going to want to choose the, uh, the dollar or four a mile or however much it is. You see what I mean? So, and then they do all these things. They, you don't get the miles as a company driver. The cents per mile is so low. So then automatically it's going, you're going to be thinking that you want to make more money. So then you're going to lean automatically to go to leasing. But even with the leasing, <laughs> I don't know many drivers, man, that make money. Maybe they, uh, one driver I knew, it was, a, it was a good friend of mine. You know, he thought that he tried to persuade me to go leasing. Um, and I seen the subs like 1200 bucks. Um, a thousand bucks, nine hundred bucks, eight hundred bucks. Sometimes in a negative as far as like two hundred something dollars if you go home. And I'm like, man, that ain't no money, bro. That's that's not no money. So you, you in a truck. So in my opinion, I'm not knocking anybody that, that does, does lease in a transaction. But you're not trying to. You you you're not trying. Opinion, yeah? You you're not trying to go. You you're not trying to go that route and go broke. You know what I'm saying, and that's where the horror stories come in yeah. like, with, with with Trans Am's uh, lease. Uh, thank you, Shannon, for the uh, for the cash app. Uh, definitely, you know I am always thirsty, man. You guys want to support me? You know what I'm saying. Hook a brother up with some coffee, man. Cash app link is in the is in the uh, is in the chat, and I do appreciate it. Um, so you 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 rocked out with uh, with Trans Am for a year. Um, uh, uh, you've been through the ups and you've been through the downs with the company. Now you decided to uh to to leave the company. Uh, what was what was your whole experience as a whole? Uh, uh, prior prior to you leaving the company, and when did you actually left? I left here on August. Um, my last day of employment there was August fifth. August fourth, actually. Uh, so I started August fifth last year, and I left August fourth this so year. So you actually, so you put in, so you put in your year and out with them. Hold on, give me one quick second. One, quick second. give me a second. Go ahead, go ahead.
uh, why he's uh, doing that. You guys in the uh, LOM community, right quick, I appreciate you guys being here. Amy Hames, uh, Wise Al. If you guys like this channel, man, don't forget to hit the like button. You know what I'm saying? The lights is free and it shows YouTube that you rocking with your boy. So I do appreciate that. And again, thank you to uh, Shannon out there to uh, hook your boy up with some, uh, with some coffee with the Cash App. If anybody else want to hook me up with some coffee because, you know, this is work. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is work. You know, I got to I got to send these invites out to these uh, to these good people. And they uh, they they want to come on and uh, share their uh, experience. If you know anybody that wants to come on and and share the experience, let me know. You know, hit me up in the Gmail or hit me up in the text. Um, hit me up in the text and uh, I will reach out. Oh, and man, my dispatch on. called me. Um my dispatch called me uh, right in the middle of the, the thing. I'm no, sorry. No, no, you good. Where was I? You uh, good. No, nah, you, you was uh you was telling us about where you was uh where you was leaving and everything. So you uh Oh yeah, so August um August the fourth was my last day of employment there and I started August fifth last year. So pretty much one year of employment. And then um it was it was a neutral experience, you know what I mean? I cleaned my truck out. I did uh I didn't leave their truck in any state like most guys would do or whatever the case. I came on my home time. I took everything out and then I called them up. I gave them like a few days notice and told them that, you know, I'm going to be taking my truck in, cleaned everything out. And then I took it back to Tampa and then caught a flight back from Tampa to West Farm. Man, you know I mean? listen, that is a good, that that is a good, great idea, if not the best idea. If you have any, any if you have any, qualms about leaving the company and all like that my suggestion is to go clean your truck out go home have like a route that'll take you home or just be like yo i want to go on some home time and all like that don't get in your feelings and be like yo i'm gonna quit i'm gonna drop the truck right here and all like that because if you let the company know what you're doing if you're letting the left hand know what the right hand is doing, then the right hand is going to fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be like, mm -hmm. you're going to be like, yo, I want to go home. I want to clean out my truck and then I'll bring my truck in it. Nah, 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 nah. We want you to bring the truck right then and there. Then if you turn around and be like, if you veer off that route, they can either cut off your, 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 your money card. You know what I'm saying? If you got, and that's, mm -hmm. and that's another thing. I'll mm -hmm. touch on that in a second. But they can cut. They can cut off your fuel card. They can call the cops. They can. They can say that you that 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 now you're stealing the truck. You're not working. You you still uh -huh. working for them, but you're still in the truck. So what you want to do is be like, yo, uh, I want to be right at home. While you at home, clean out the truck, and then when you get back in, be like, yo, um, yeah. That's it. Give me a load to bring you, uh, bring the truck back up to the uh, office or the terminal, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll turn the keys in that way. Never know, never, yeah. never let them, never let the left hand know what your right hand is doing. You know, that's 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 mm -hmm. one that's that's one to grow on right there. One to grow on. All right, so mm -hmm. you um, my 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 my, go ahead. My DM actually had called me um, mm -hmm. like a day after I turned the truck in and, and he like, you know, he was like, yeah, you were a good driver. You were always on time for delivery and never really late for any pickup or anything like that. We never really had any bad, you know, mm -hmm. um, issues with you or anything like that. But um, next, if you want to come back to work for Transam, the door is always open because you turned in your equipment and everything was good. They inspected the equipment. Okay. There's no damage okay. or anything done to it. You know what I mean? So okay. they gave me the option to come back. I mean, I highly doubt that, that you're going that you're gonna come back. Go back but, but thanks for but the, oppor yeah, thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> thanks yeah, for the opportunity. Yeah, I appreciate you know. it. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> yeah, basically. So uh, so I'm I'm looking on your uh on your YouTube. This gentleman right here, Javon. Check him out on his uh on his YouTube page, uh, Javon. Um, one of the videos that you got right here, random drug tested ticket. 
You 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 got a ticket in in New York or something like that? No, nah, it wasn't in uh, New York. It was uh, what was it in Kansas actually? Oh, you got it. So this um, CR, yeah. Basically, what had happened was um, I was at, they sent me to the shipper in Kansas. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I was picking up some sausage or something like that. Okay. And I ended up spending the entire day there. Like I was, over, and I was there for like nine hours beyond my appointment time because something was happening with the uh, system at the shipper. Right. And you know, trends they don't pay attention. Oh, whoa, 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 bro. Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They, they don't what? They, they don't what? They don't pay the. Hello? Hello? Oh, damn it. Hold on. Hold on. I think we lost, I think we lost them because. I, I don't think Trans Am liked the dad. They must have, they must have had some magical shit that says, yo, uh, he said the ill word. Hold on. Let me see if I can get him back. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Trans-, Trans Am reached out through the phone lines and cut us, man. They said, uh, they said, no, you said the <laughs> wrong thing, bro. So they, no detention? <laughs> no, they, they don't pay detention? Nah, they don't. Nah, no detention, man. That, wait, they don't, you get, they you don't. Get layover. You get layover. You get layover if you ask for layover. Um, If you're in the instance of. One time, you know, as a matter of fact, the first load I got on Trans Am when I finished um, off my mentor truck, because when I was doing it, they had a mentor and all that stuff. I was I did a mentor for like one week, and then you get your own truck. Um, the first load I got, uh, I think it was like 30, 36,000 pounds of frozen green peas and green beans. Okay. It was delivered in Ohio um, at a Tampa facility, but it was all expired. So they rejected the load. And um, I ended up having to sit at, sit there, and I got, I think it was like 90 bucks what I got for layover, but um, they don't pay attention. So I was wow. there for nine hours. You know, my head wasn't, my head space wasn't, um, wasn't all that right that day. And how I ended up getting a ticket, when I finally got loaded, um, I was coming out the gate, and this PR England guy stopped right directly in front of me in the middle of the road. Okay. I don't know if he was sending forms. I don't know what he was doing. I mean, like, in the middle of the road, just blocked the road for, like, four or five minutes. Okay. You know what I mean? And I didn't want to be a douchebag, like, bumping the horns. I was just there patiently waiting, and then I started flashing my lights, and he just drove off. So I'm going down the road. We're going to get up we got up to this intersection, and then I uh, there was a stop sign. He, he pulled off right in front of me after he pulled off. I got up to the stop sign. I rolled. So, like, you know, I basically slowed down. I should have come to, come to a complete stop. Um, and I rolled. And the cop was sitting across the street in the dark. I guess he, it's just a spot for him to, to, to get truck drivers just like that. You see what mm-hmm. I mean? So, me being so upset and with the nine hours and the CR England guy stopping in front of me, I totally, like, wasn't paying attention. So, I pulled off at the stop sign. And as soon as I pulled off, he came up behind me and, you know, said I failed to yield at the stop sign and he gave me a ticket. That was the only ticket I got um, for my entire time okay. um, while I was there. So do you had to, of course, yeah. you had to let, uh, let Trans Am know that you got the ticket and everything. Yeah, I had, I had, I had called um, call the safety department and let them know um, that I had got the ticket and all that. How, did, now, let me ask you this. Did you, did you fight the ticket or, or did you pay the ticket? I ended up paying the ticket. Uh, in all honesty, I was going to fight the ticket. Um, in, a, in a sense, I kind of wish I did. And then, like, I was like, you know what? It's just a deal. You know what I mean? Um, the ticket was for like one, uh, I think it was like 160 or 150 or so. Wow. Right? And um, when I called Ticket Clinic, they said they were charging me 500 bucks. To go, um, to go fight the ticket, right? Oh, okay. And then there was this other company. There was this other company that I signed up with. I think I paid them like ninety bucks to initiate a membership, and then I had to pay like fifty bucks every month. And then on top of that, they wanted five hundred bucks also just to go show up in court. So I was like, you know, let's pay the one fifty and call it a day. Um, I had some previous tickets on my driving record from from my personal vehicle mm-hmm. and they were getting up to three years. So although I have one ticket other than the ticket that I got in the truck, um, all those tickets were basically falling off. 
So my driving record is pretty much so. Oh, okay. God, if God realizes in um, like December, if thing is good, the other one should fall off, and I'm hoping to not get any more. So anybody out there driving a truck or even in your personal vehicle, let's try to stay on the safe side. That's now. what's up. You know, That's what's up. That's what's they, up. They, yeah, they, they sit right in the dark right there, and they're just, you know, just lurking, waiting for you to slip up. Just to come get you, you know what I mean? They be waiting for you in the cut, man. They that that's what they do. They be waiting for uh -huh. you in the cut, bro. All right, so uh, you 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 done with Trans Am? Bye bye. Close the door on that chapter. Uh, you opened up another chapter. So are are you uh driving with a new company? And if so, how how's the new company treating you? I mean, it's my first week in on a new company. Um, I did my tower research. On this company that I'm with right now, like anywhere else, it has the pros and the cons, it has the good and the bad, you know what I mean? So far, it's been good, you know what I mean? I, I wish not to say what company it is right now because I'm actually going to put out two videos um, on, you know, letting people know what company because a lot of people have been reaching out. But a little bit about the company, I'm still doing reefer right now. Um, and I'm doing hazmat all in right now. Okay, so you got all your endorsements. Or oh yeah, I did my endorsements before I, I went um this, before I started even looking for jobs. Yeah. All right. I have my tanker, my hazmat, my doubles, my triples. Now let I me mean? ask you something about. I know I might not use them. Let me mm -hmm. ask you something about hazmat right quick because I'm I'm still on the fence on getting mine. I mean I got my mm -hmm. I got my doubles and triples which I'm not going to use, but I I got them anyway. And I just I got my tankers uh -huh. maybe about a couple of years ago. But I'm still on the fence about hazmat because hazmat is uh is is has an has an expiration date for X amount of years. You know what I'm saying? So uh, mm -hmm. after X amount of years, do your hazmat expire? And if so, do you gotta go back and take the whole Test all over. You gotta go. You gotta go back and take the test. The whole test. You gotta go back and take the, the test. The but same I mean, test that I would take initially. Yeah, I mean, it's only. Yeah, basically, but it's it's only a few questions. Stay up on your thing. I mean, look at it this way: when you just started and you got your hazmat, um, you have it for like four or five years or however long, right? And then a couple of years down the line, let's say you were driving, you were doing hazmat for like four years. Remember, you're getting experience in the field. Hands on. It's not like just reading the book and studying, mm -hmm. studying. So you're getting the experience in the field, hands on. So when even if it does expire within four years, and you go back to do the test, or you go practice, go do the test. When you go do the test, remember you have you have you have the in the field experience, and you practice. So it shouldn't be it like shouldn't be, that much. Of it a, shouldn't it be as hard as the as the first time, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. Okay. I feel you. I got you. All right. Now, what about uh? Now, now, what about the the fingerprint and all like that? You got you got to redo all that too. Within well, how how, how long is I how would've... long is the hazmat uh uh for? Mine is valid for about four. Mine is valid for about four years. Oh, okay, so just around the same time that you have your driver's license. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. 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 All right, so the company that you're rocking out with is now you're you're now using your your hazmat. So now you're not hazmat. now. Of course, you can't go through certain places with 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 hazmat material. What 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 are you, what are you hauling so far? I mean, I know you've been there. You only been there for a short period, but what what hazmat material? Yeah, I've only been there for. Um, bro, these I ain't gonna lie. These these names so big, all these chemicals names. I can't even pronounce some of them. You know what I mean? Some chemicals looking like bleach or whatever the case. But from from some of the research that I've done, um, some of the hazmat products that the other drivers have hauled, they all haul like used needles from like hospitals and all that stuff. Um, different chemicals, um, explosives, fireworks. You know what I mean? All that kind of stuff. Um. You know, so it varies. I've only had two hazmat loads since I've actually since I've been at this company. Um, and like I said, I'm I haven't, I'm not going to discuss this company, but a, a few drivers were asking me um, why it took me so long to leave Transdam. And let me just touch on that real quick. Mm -hmm. um, the, the pay scale that I was on it started at forty three cents and it goes all the way up until nine cents when you tap it out. 
um, after six months being on the account because they give you three cents every week for on-time delivery. That's a bonus. You get three cents um, every month added to whatever cents it was. So after, if you tap out the pay scale, you're really at 46 cents and then you get three cents additionally for on-time delivery every week. So with that being said, like I call a lot of companies to move on to, but most of them, they were basically starting me at 43 cents, 46 cents. And then I'm like, I'm going home like nine days because I was on the dedicated account. It really wouldn't make any sense for me to switch company just for like two more cents. So this company that I'm working with is actually a smaller company. And um, I was at 46 cents when I when I left Transam because I was just about to get my next um, three cents. No, I'm at 70 cents, seven zero, 70 cents per mile. And they give you 3,000 plus miles every week. And it's a 1099 position. That's what's up. You know what I mean? So you have to pay your own taxes. So you have to be... You have to be a little bit more careful. Um, the first thing I did, I did my research on the whole 1099 thing. I spoke with my tax consultant. Um, and now I have my own LLC set up for tax benefit. Um, and that's, you know, it's a good thing. It's kind of training me, you know, for the future, um, like getting my own truck and all that stuff. So for the business aspect of it, it's good to start with this company. And so far, they've been giving me the miles, you know what I mean? So it's, it's been good so far, if you ask me. All right, all right, all right. Javon, everybody. Yo, man, I, I appreciate you coming on, chopping it up with me, man. You know, giving a little bit of uh, insight on uh, Trans Am and a little bit of insight about yourself, man. Welcome to the community. Um, you got you. Do you have any uh, do you have any advice for the young jacks that's coming out here uh, that probably might been in the same situation as you? Yeah, um, just be patient in the game, you know what I mean? Use it. If, if you're getting in the game and you're not with a, be, a better paying company or a company that you feel like, you know, it's not making the work well, just look at it this way that you're gaining some experience. What you should do over the period of time while you're um, doing it. Basically, you know, to manage your clock, during the ins and outs of out. And Uh-oh, we're we breaking up again. Hello? Can you, can yeah, you I got me? you. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I'm saying just use the time that the company gave you, the opportunity that the company gave you to basically learn how to manage your clock, learn how to learn about your logs, learn about the hours of service, learn how to run, you know what I mean, use your time wisely, and then um, learn how to maneuver the truck properly, you know what I mean, try to fit that truck, you know, as best as possible in the dock, you know what I mean, don't be scared to get out and look as many times because it's going to cost you nothing to, to get out the truck and look, but it's going to cost you something if you hit something or hit somebody's truck. Exactly. 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 All right, man. Well, I, I again, I appreciate you coming on, man, chopping it up with me, man. That's Javon, everybody. Um, if you guys are interested yeah, in... Hold on. Hold on, Jay. Don't go nowhere. Uh, if you guys are interested in coming on and chopping it up with me, I really do appreciate it. Hit me up in the Gmail. That's LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. Um, come on over and, and, and do the damn thing. You can also hit me up at... Uh, at Instagram at Lockout Men. Uh, hit me up over there too. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more content like this. And that all button so that you can get the content whenever I drop it out. Now I'm about to have somebody to play me out. While they doing that, I want to say thank you to everybody that's watching. Thank you that's listening. Uh, and thank you for the support. Hook your boy up with some coffee or something to drink or something like that. Cash app and the coffee app is in the description. You know what I'm saying? And on that note, I want to say thank you to everybody to watching. Thank you to the LOM community. Not gone yet, Amy. Not gone yet. But I want to say thank you to the LOM community for joining us today. And on that note, you guys take it easy. And I'm about to say peace.